Hey, hey guys, guys welcome, welcome back, back to our, our channel. channel. My name is Julian. And my name is Dorothy. And together we spread special love unconditionally. So today guys, we are going to be filming um, an interracial couples tag. So I have been seeing a lot of people do this. Um, who's obviously in an interracial relationship and I thought it would be really fun to do and interesting to do because you know people have asked and also I know people in the future um, any new subscribers would be curious so um, we just want to just answer any of your questions before before you guys you know bombard us with questions mm -hmm. um, about things you guys might be curious um, to know about us so obviously stay tuned stay tuned guys um, okay so the first question is basically where are you guys from you know where is your um what's your ethnicity is that how you say it yeah yeah mm -hmm. okay well i guess i'll go first um but i'm from guatemala so i mean i'm guatemalan mm -hmm. um so i'm latino that's ethnicity yeah and i'm from uh, my parents are from Ghana, but I still identify as Ghanaian, and so I'm African. Um, <laughs> that makes my identity African, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So I should mention that well, I wasn't actually born in Guatemala. I, I'm born in the United States, but my parents are Guatemalan. Yeah. So that's that's what I meant as Guatemalan. We both identify, obviously, as what our parents are. So he's Guatemalan, and I'm Ghanaian. Okay. So next question is. Um, is this the first time dating out of your race? Um, so basically for me, um, no. no. This is not my first time being outside of my race. But yeah, mm -hmm. I've only been with one person of my race and he was abusive. So I've only ever been in two relationships. And obviously you can see who I am with currently. So I'm in, um, this is one of these relationships. <laughs> one of these. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> <laughs> my I, uh, my previous relationship, I don't even know if I call it a relationship, but like it was she, she was technically inside my race, but she's not really. She was like half. She was mixed. She was mixed with white and Hispanic. Yeah. So. So yeah, technically you did date outside your race. Yeah, technically. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. So basically, me too. I wasn't in like 50 million relationships. Only in three. So when I wouldn't even count them as relationships, that's why because I feel like people no offense to anybody else, but I feel like you date someone for like a few months or a few weeks, especially if it's like your younger days. I don't really count it as much a relationship as someone mm -hmm. you dated for years. Yeah. But like I said, take no offense to that. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, so the next question, which I'm kinda of surprised Grout, mm -hmm. is do you only date black girls? And then also me, do I only date Hispanic men? I never really had a preference. That's true. He doesn't. Yeah. He likes any race. So that's what I love about him. I feel like um, I don't really care about the race of the person. Um, it's all about what's within, especially now that we're grown. Um, I feel like it's more about what's within the person and not what's in the outside. So mm -hmm. honestly, I wouldn't, if I wasn't with um, Julian, then wouldn't have a problem dating within my race or outside of my race. I feel like people are people and you should love anybody um, for who they are, if they're a good person. But people have their preferences sometimes. And yeah. I don't think it's wrong for people to have their preferences. I just feel like we don't have any preferences. Yeah. Well, she used to have preferences. She used to really like Latino men, specifically. I still do. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, what is the most challenging thing that has been um, hard for us dating interracially? You wanna start? Yeah. Oh, you, you wanna start? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a difficult question. So you want like, me to start then? I mean, like I already know what you're gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, family. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, on his side, my family. my family are very accepting. My mom doesn't care about whoever. I date at all, you know, whatever I date. His family wants us to date a Guatemalan person specifically. So, yeah, I feel like family wise. Yeah, family wise. So we both agree on that. Yeah, that I definitely think that that's the only, only been the challenging thing for us. Yeah, for sure. Nothing else, to be honest, that I know of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anything else. <laughs> 
Do people stare at you when you go out in public? So. And like being an interracial couple or just people just no, staring no, at you? No, I think people just stare in general because how beautiful she looks. <laughs> it's not because we're a couple or anything. I don't think they don't really care about we're an interracial couple. I don't think it's a problem. It's not about us being a couple, it's just how beautiful she is. Oh, baby. Um, but I honestly don't think it, yeah, I don't think it's because it's being an interracial relationship to be honest. Um, I do get hit on a lot in public though, so I feel like that's maybe, maybe the reason we get stared at a lot, but it's nothing bad. And also he's an attractive person, so females will stare at him too. So I don't feel like, I just feel like it's just because of that. I don't think they're staring at us because like, oh my God, you're in an interracial relationship. Yeah, it's no. 2022, come on now. Like, at this point, it's like, People are in so many different relationships. Why does it matter now? Yeah. You know? So. It reminds me of a specific story um, when we were coming out of the car and going to the store one day and another couple and another car next to us saw us. Yeah. And then you were like, I think they were staring at us, watching us and everything. And we came out of the car and they came and they came out of the car and they're like, you guys are so cute together. Oh, oh, my God, <laughs> oh yeah. Like, me and Julian. <laughs> okay, Julian is always all over me. So we're, every time we're in public, Julian, I... I, I can't do PDA. I get so shy, but Julian, he doesn't care. He can kiss me, hug me, hold me, do whatever the hell he wants to do with me. So we're in the car and he wants to make out with me so badly. And I'm just like, people are right there. And he's like, come on, they're not gonna see it. And he just grabs my face and kisses me. And he was playing around with me, trying to tickle me and stuff. And so obviously, you know, the people like so excited. I didn't hear them say anything. Julian told me what they said and I was like, oh, that's really nice. And then once we were at Walmart and this one lady, she saw us passing by. Remember that um, this um, black lady she was passing by and then mm -hmm. she saw us and then she was like wow you guys are a very beautiful couple and I was like oh thank you and we just she, like as people say it just it's very nice things it's never anything bad so yeah for sure. yeah what are you saying are you asking questions are you asking questions so is, um do we plan to get married and slash have children. I, well, we both have the same answer, obviously. It's yes. 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, we're engaged. Yes. I mean, like, if you're in a serious relationship with anybody of any race at any point, obviously you really think about and consider this as one of your things. So, obviously, we're sure that we're going to have that. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, as simple as that, I guess. Julian, like, since we were very young, obviously we're so young, but he told me, you know, I'm ready, you know, to start life with you and be a father to our kids and all this he just gave me a whole speech that made me cry mm -hmm. um and so i'm just happy that i'm going to have a husband who's going to be in my child's life because that's what me and him lacked in our child growing up like i lacked a father figure and he also lacked a father figure in his life even though his dad was there all his life but was very neglectful um but anyways so um 100 going to bring kids into this world we actually want four so mm -hmm. um i want six though <laughs> okay four to six okay i'm gonna convince him with the other two <laughs> she's gonna have to convince me the other two because yeah i'm not i'm not trying i'm not i want a big family if i could i'll get 10 kids to be honest and I'm saying no. Yeah. To that. But he he's fine with four kids though. So yeah. That's at least that's a good thing. We're though. compromising with four kids. Yeah, we we negotiated and said four kids. But he said if I'm too traumatized in my pregnancy, then probably would I'll just only stick with four and probably nothing more. Yes. But you know, I really want a huge family because I don't know. I feel like I just lack the closeness and bonding type relationship with family that I've always wanted growing up. I always wanted to, I don't know, like, I want to be best friends with my kids. I want to be going out on like mommy daughter dates, son, son and daughter dates, or like, you know, daddy daughter dates, you know, son and, and daddy dates, and you know, just family dates, like, you know, and just having fun, like, just feeling like your kid can go up to you, like how my kid comes to me and be like, hey mom, like, I just lost my virginity, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But I don't know, I just I just want that closeness where you don't feel so scared to tell your parents about something. For example, like I want my daughter and my son to not be scared to tell me, hey, I like this person. But with us growing up, it was like a fear. We had to hide it. Sorry guys about that. Um, our camera um, turned off. But where we left off, off was basically me just saying that like, you know, I don't want my kids to fear 
coming um, to us and just telling us about someone they like. You know what I mean? Or mm -hmm. like, hey, can I go out to, you know, hang with my friends? You know, I want that trust with the kids. We we wanted we were planning on homeschooling our kids and then and then like them having a choice whether they want to go to school or be, continue being homeschooled. Um, but basically, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like us growing up, we didn't have that where we could come to our parents and talk to them about stuff like that. Cause yeah. We grew up in very, um, well, I grew up in a very strict household. Um, he didn't grow up in a strict household, but mm -hmm. he grew up with very judgmental parents. So it's not like he could like be the kid, you know, the center, the center, the third. Um, with me, obviously, I felt like I, I couldn't do absolutely nothing, you know, and it was unfair because I feel like my other siblings had more privileges than I had. Um, growing up, for example, when I was, I know for a fact that when I was 14, um, I couldn't go out with my friends, you know, unsupervised or without my mom speaking to all their parents and stuff. But when my brother was 14 or is 14 and he can do all of that things. He's been doing it since I don't know when. And so, I don't know, I just want my kids to just know that they have that freedom to come to me and to Julian and talk to us about anything and everything because you want that. Of course, you're going to still have that parent-child relationship, but also you can also be best friends with your child and feel close to your child. I don't want to feel distant from my child. That's why I want that huge family because, I don't know, I, I always, we both always felt like the black sheep of our family and i don't know why i'm getting the whole story now i'm not gonna cry though okay so, yeah she wants a really big family obviously i'm not used to that sort of thing um in the sense where like uh i have one half brother and i have one full brother we're all nine years apart so basically for half of my life i was a uh, only child and so um yeah i mean like i was never so like that idea of having a really large family has never been something i've like i've never had in you know like my entire life so have um it's compromising with four kids obviously i do want a, a bigger family than just what i had but i don't want to have a gigantic family yeah, yeah. extremely large family yeah that's true mm -hmm. and i grew up with a huge family obviously my mom has um, four children um, my dad, I don't even know what, how many children he has. But anyways, um, I grew up in a huge family. But like I said, um, I want a huge family, but I want to feel connected. I grew up in a huge family, but I, I didn't feel connected with anybody. Like, I don't genuinely feel like... I don't want this to offend anybody, but... I genuinely feel like all I have is Julian, so... You know? Like, it's the first person I think of if I need help or I want to, you know... Talk to someone is always Julian because I don't feel judged when I talk to him. I'm happy in that aspect. I feel like now that I'm older, our relationship is way better than it was when I was younger, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I feel like I had so much pressure when I was younger to grow up so fast. You know, just being nine years old, I cooked, I cleaned, I did a lot of things, you know, that I, sh I just, I, I, I feel like I missed out a lot in my own childhood growing up you know i feel like i took up a lot of responsibility and then when i finally changed in 11th grade nobody was used to me just finally just being like you know what i'm tired of all this i just want to be myself i just want to just be who i always want to be dress how i want to dress like you know be who i want to be just you know like things that i want to like i don't want to feel like i'm just being someone i'm not and for a long time i feel like i held that in and i always knew i had depression but i feel like Obviously, um, growing up in a, uh, a strict African household, they don't really understand mental health well enough. Now they do, obviously, but I'm just talking about the aspect of back then. So, 100%, um, we do bring a family to this world. We know what to teach our kids, you know, how to raise our kids. We're going to let them both know how to speak um, Spanish and tree, um, also English. So they're going to be trilingual. Um, we want them to obviously be respectful, kind. I want them to know that we're always here for them to talk to no matter what. Um, and I just want them to know that they're loved. They're not born yet, but I just want them to know that they're loved and they're gonna have such an amazing father in their life. Like, they're gonna be so lucky to have Julian as a dad, honestly. Yeah. And they're gonna be very lucky to have Dorothy as a mom. 
Yeah. Sorry this is a very long answer to a very short question. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go more in detail about that. I feel like that's so important. And so many people miss out on that good family like bond. You know, like I don't remember the last time I just sat down in the table other than holidays just to sit down every like I do that only with Julian, like just to sit down at a table every time like every day to eat, you know, food. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. the last time I did that with my family, other than holidays. Obviously Thanksgiving, we did that. Yeah. Um, we didn't do that for Christmas, but like, usually just Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. We sit down as a whole. But I don't know, I want our kids to always know that we're gonna have that family dinners, we're gonna have the family talks, we're gonna accept them for who they are. I don't care if they're um, like gay, lesbian, transgender, whatever yeah. they are. Whatever they wanna be, you know, straight. Mm -hmm. Um, we're gonna accept our kids for who they are. We don't care. We just love them because we gave birth to them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and gave them life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know how she mentioned how, like, she used to, like, she, you know, some, when I went to Thanksgiving with her and, um, for Thanksgiving dinner, we all sat on the table and everything was really nice. Um, everybody talked. It was really fun. Um, tell you a little bit more of my, um, I know what she's gonna say. Tell, to, to tell you guys <laughs> a little bit more about my family dynamic. I've never had that sort of thing, and so like you know, not even like the thing where it's like oh you sit around and eat it at the table and talk to each other, but like even in Thanksgiving where it's like you know you would have at least at that point have that nobody really really talk to each other, and um, and so and also like the time my favorite time of Thanksgiving was when I went to my aunt's place because she would cook good she cooked good food, <laughs> and I would eat like by myself at the table there. And so it was very delicious. And all my so also to show you a little bit of my, my family dynamic. Um, my I had a JROTC event freshman year, so I was about 13. Uh, my dad dropped me off in the city, you know. Um, I was very new to the city, never been there in my life, and so like he just dropped me off with the address and he left. And so I kind of got lost, and I had to find my way to the actual place. Luckily, I found my way to the place. I did the event um, halfway through the school. Uh, I don't know if my phone died or something, or maybe I, or maybe my dad didn't answer or something. So like I was, what like 30 minutes from my place or something like that, and so I just found my way home uh, through the bus and everything. And yeah. Yeah, remember he got home and he texted me because we we're best friends back then. Yeah. And then he told me the story and I was so angry like. And I was just like, how dare he, like, he leave his child alone, like, you know, like, you don't know if he got kidnapped, blah. and just knowing Julian as a person, Julian is, oh my god, he's the nicest person I ever met in my life, like, and, and he's also very, like, he does my conversation, he's very, like, oh my gosh, like, he's just very easy to be with in a relationship, I, I'm not, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, like, I just feel like if someone would have went to Kim to attack Julian, like, I, it's just scary to just think of, Thank God nothing bad happened to you, but that just pisses me off. So, yeah, yeah I'm gonna just hold my comments. And so that's why, you know, I just said that she had a strict family. I didn't have a strict family. That shows you how I wasn't, I didn't have a strict family. Mm -hmm. He had a careless family, basically. Uh, yes, and so, although she's right, 100%, it was very um, dangerous for me to be out in the city, especially if you know the city where we live in and everything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be, I, and knowing me as well, I could have been a lot more difficult or trouble than it was. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, luckily for me, it was just fun. And it was very good to find my way around the city. Um, yeah. But I was only 13, so. Yeah. I feel like I would have not made it through just all of my teenage years without Julian. So I'm really happy and blessed that I met him literally in the start of my teenage years. So like 12 and beyond. It's just, it's crazy. And so I didn't have to deal with it. Like anything we went through, we always had each other as best for being best friends for four years and then being together for three years um, as comfort. And so that's what I'm really happy about, to be honest. Throughout all our difficulties in life, I'm just happy that you were in my life. Same, baby. The next question is, what made you fall in love with this person? Okay. So I guess I'm answering first. <laughs> Unless you want me to. No, I can answer. Okay. Right. So, um, we 
like I, we mentioned before, we grew up um, together. Basically, we met each other in the, like when we were eighth grade, and so from then on, we were best friends. Um, and so, like, just having her there to like support me and like encourage me to do all these things and like to be able to succeed in life and to be able to help me through my tough times was why I fell in love with her. You know, all the things that she done for me is really you know, no realize how much of a great person she is and how much that, you know, she really cares for me and how much um, I really appreciate that. And so I fell in love with her. Yeah, I agree. And I also knew that I fell in love with Julian because like I said, like, um, yes, yeah, so we met um, in eighth grade and just a year of being um, best friends. He told me he loved me for the first time and um, the way he said it, put in a way where he said, oh, you're my rock. If I find the text message, I'll post it here. <laughs> the first every time he said, I love you, I took a screenshot. <laughs> um, he said, you're my rock, you know. Right now I'm going through a roller coaster of emotions and a lot of things that's happening to me. But I'm just really happy that I have you and I really need you. Like, please don't be one of those people who leave me. Like, just a whole thing. And that made me cry and it made me really happy. And that's how I knew I really loved him. But what made me know I fell in love with him was the time that um, he gave me my, the promise ring after dating for a few months. And, you know, I don't know. It was just how he showed his love for me. It's just. He was always loving, he was always caring. Like even being best friends, I feel like I probably fell in love with you before that to be honest. Being best friends because before we even got in a relationship because like I went through so many things and he if when I needed someone sorry, I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> when I needed someone, he was there, he talked to me for hours. Um, he was on the phone for me for hours. Um and I felt like if he wasn't there, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done um, without him and so I'm really happy that he was with me through my toughest times because I feel like I would have not been in this earth right now if it wasn't because of him so I'm really happy that whew, I'm really happy that um, I have in my life and I feel like like every day I fall in love with him like I am not easy to be in a relationship with and I'm so happy that he loves every part of me and never makes me feel like he he never makes me even think um that i ha not even have a slight doubt that he doesn't you know he wake up in the morning he always calls me beautiful he's always affectionate towards me his love for me just grows and you can just tell it never goes away and that's what i appreciate and especially knowing someone for seven years like we got into a relationship already knowing each other mm -hmm. and so i feel like you know you get scared of like, are you gonna stop knowing what to talk about but it's like it's an ongoing thing in our relationship and i'm just really happy that um i'm with my soulmate and my best friend love you, love you so, baby. so next question is are there any cultural clashes and i think it should i think the question is just between us i believe mm -hmm. yeah no no i don't think so not at all yeah not at all mm -hmm. That's it guys, you know, please like, comment, subscribe for more videos. That was very, um, surprising ending, I guess you could say. Yeah, um, I'm really happy that we discussed all these things. I feel like yeah, for sure. it's very important. Obviously, people in interracial relationships know they're in an interracial relationship. Mm -hmm. It's just never a huge issue for the person in that relationship. It's just normal. Like, I see people as people and who cares about the race, but we need to understand our kids are going to be mixed race. And so we need to let them know, love both races, and identify uh, with both races. And I'm really happy we got to talk about these questions and stuff. Yeah, I think it's gonna get very really emotional and vulnerable, mm -hmm. but I think it's very important. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm glad we had this, um, you know, talk with all these different questions. Yeah. And so yeah. So, if you guys are worried about going into an interrela interracial relationship, you know, mm -hmm. you don't know if things will go wrong or anything. Mm -hmm. And, like, I assume that most people nowadays aren't yeah, really worried about that. Yeah, But, so. like, if you guys are at any point, you know, I guess 
don't try it out try don't it out it. yeah and don't let the judgments of your family friends whoever also dictate whether you date outside your race or not mm -hmm. just remember that there are people just like you and who cares whatever race they are like as long as they love you for you and make you feel happy and just as long as you want to be with that person, love being with that person, and vice versa, then they're meant for you. Yeah, for you sure. Don't just want to be inside your race just because you're scared and feared of the judgment. Because trust me, it's not as bad as it seems. Yeah, we had that end of where his family was not as accepting. But I just feel like, you know, luckily my family was accepting. And even if both families aren't, like you guys have each other and you're mm -hmm. gonna build that bond you're gonna have your own family so don't ever you know let that be a reason why you don't want to find your soulmate because most people sure. will miss out on their soulmate because they just want to date a particular race mm -hmm. but yeah thank you guys so much for watching and if you made it to the end comment below a white heart <laughs> um please like comment and subscribe for more videos bye guys bye guys Together when they can see our love is stronger than we can achieve. We'll be all we can be. Uh. We'll be all we can be. Uh. Two souls became one. The world is ours for the taking. Dorothy, Juliet, live the dream and we doing it. Love unconditional, spread it around. Met for each other, we covering ground. We didn't know what love was, but with each other we found trust.